What is going on, subscribers, and welcome back to Punk and Dylan's channel. And today, we're in a brand new game, Satisfied Factory. So this game is freaking amazing. So, essentially, the backstory is you land on a alien island, or alien planet, I should say. And you basically gotta survive. So, this is where we first started. This is our hub. This is the generators you start with. It's a uh, plant-based material that you uh, use. I don't think I have any on here. Yep. Uh, nope. I don't think so. Yeah, there's some. So there's your biomass fuels. You can do wood, alien, um, carcass, wood, and leaves. So this is where I kind of started. I'll throw a picture up, and I had my production facility here first. Uh, we had limestone. We had, uh, what is this one? Yep, iron ore. So these are your base. You can put a miner. You can mine anywhere you want. Very awesome game. This is what they look like when you start the game. You have to mine this rock. To put the portable miner or put the miner that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And then, let's see here. I showed you the generators. Here's a storage that I have sitting here. This is where you complete your milestones. So if we go back to tier 1, the first one was utility. So you have to uh, get these parts. So this is plate, um, iron rods and wire so you just have it probably if I was you guys I would complete most of these milestones by using the crafting bench I wouldn't start making an actual production until tier let's see tier 2 you can still manage that maybe in the part way up tier 2 because it does get pretty expensive. You got to start making uh, rotators and um, the reinforced iron plates. Um, different productions will take uh, different times, so definitely pay attention to that. While we head over to the UPS Mega Factory, and then you have the uh, space elevator. You do complete missions with that, sending items back to Earth. And then these are our coal plants off to the right that you see. This is a work in progress. I've been working on this for about two or so weeks, I think. You can get it on Epic Games for at least 27 bucks, I think. It's a couple dollars shy of 30 bucks. So this is my mega facility. So we're gonna start over here first. So these are the power plant. We have these boosters. These are power shields. Uh, they are from a power slug. I also have that scanner to find them. And these are uh, what boost the power so you don't have to have a million coal generators. You can also do it with the biomass if you want to run them. The difference between the biomass plant and the coal is the coal is automatic. The biomass you have to fill every I would say about 15 minutes. So, start with the biomass, then get to the coal. So, actually, let's start on the first floor. We're gonna start outside first. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you one ore, and that is the same exact process for all the other ores and how they get shipped into the building. We're just gonna walk out here. Here's my uh, coal production line. You can ride the conveyor belts all you want, which we will. Power comes out through here to go to the outside grid. We have a bridge that is going to go to another factory, which we call the U or the FedEx factory, which holds our oil production. I recently just got it, so it's a little up-and-coming process. So here's the miners I was talking about. So the rock was right here. And then you set this miner. This is miner um, two. So this is like the second version. But the animations are so cool. Look at the um, the pipe going. And if you know anything about drilling, you have to have those pipe encasements so that the drill bit can go into it. 
This game has some really cool textures, really cool animation. Uh, for being early beta, this game is ready to go to full game, in my opinion. Now this is early access, you can get into the experimental, which they are still obviously doing experimental stuff. And there are bugs in the experimental, but I said, eh, I want to enjoy the game. So let's go into the early beta, and there's plenty of stuff to do here. So this is Iron Ore. So Iron Ore has four miners. You got your limestone way down there. So it goes on to here, and this has a conveyor belt splitter tool. There's two of them. And then it splits it in. That one is actually a merger. This one is... Or wait. No, this one's the splitter. This one's the merger. The only difference is you have three inputs instead of three outputs. And you can stack them too, which you will see in the facility. So let's hop on the uh, conveyor belt. This is a uh, conveyor belt three. So you go a lot faster. It's about 120 items per minute. So then it comes up through here, passes underneath some other productions. And then these walls have conveyor belt entrances. So this is the two. There's three on the other side and then should have a single one over here somewhere yeah there's your single one you got conveyor belt lifters which we definitely use you got um, copper ingots on that one and if we look out over the uh, hillside here you're gonna see uh, copper ore coming up which I yeah I have two of them now very cool detail and then this is the back of the facility. You got conveyor belt lifters, which you'll see up on the second floor. So the life of an ore. So how does that start? So it's gonna go from the mining operation all the way up to the building. And then we're gonna go walk through our entrance, which goes into the storage container. So we have coal, and we have uh, and then we have copper, and then they come out of there and they go into a smelter. Um, let's see here. Between all the processes, copper and iron are the only ones that need to be smelted, plus steel. I guess I am looking at steel, because steel is the upgraded form. This is the two um, inputs to make that. These are your steel. I do have color, so we can paint stuff. This is your default thing. Everything's orange. So it goes into the back of the smelter goes into here so each process has this little square so one iron ingot 30 per minute it tells you how much wattage how much seconds and efficiency here's your clocking speed like we showed you in the generators highly recommend getting the scanner as soon as possible so you can find the power slugs but they're pretty easy just look around trees and rocks they spawn every single night We'll take the that's the steel and then the iron ingots go out we'll look at this the, the uh, iron and it goes into the back of these storage containers these are the double stack I don't know if I still have any single stacks yeah I think I have some upstairs still goes into the back gets stored because these smelters will produce more than the constructors will actually make of the product as you see this one is a little slow so you would definitely put power slugs on these but when you do you gotta make sure you got enough power because when you advance these machines they obviously take more wattage so it comes out the back goes through our splitter and then uh, let's see if we can go around this you can't really hop on those arms and then it comes out here comes out the back goes through a splitter and then into a conveyor belt lifter as the conveyor belt lifter goes up it's gonna go up to the second floor obviously we can't take the lifter so I built in this walkway there's a staircase over there wraps you around and 
we gotta walk all the way over through so I kind of like set this all up so irons on one side coppers on the other side and in the middle it's kind of like empty it just has um, limestone for concrete so we actually put some different we put a, a different production line in which you will see in a minute so then it comes up here here's the uh, lifters comes into the back this is a single stack storage container so I have three of them stacked up and then they come out the back come into this maze of conveyor belts into the back of an assembler assembler can take two items and make one so with the reinforced iron plates it's only making five per minute so you remember down on the iron ingots it was making 30 per minute so each process will make different amounts per minute the module frames they only make four per minute highly recommend making a bunch of module frames at the start because you will need them down at the end of the road the rotators are only six per minute make sure you have enough screws too screws are hard to come by and then this is my screw production so when you click on a constructor you select recipe and here's all your recipes you have iron plate concrete biomass wood biofuel which you need for your chainsaw which comes in handy and then from there uh, we'll follow the screw line the screws come out of the back of the second container this one is storing some other stuff there's your crude oil which we will see in a little bit because we do need to go to the FedEx factory and screws are supposed to be in here but like I said I have at least four processes that need screws and then screws will come out the back here and the short little conveyor belt stubbies conveyor belt lifters you saw that's what we're looking at right here and then like I said in the middle we don't have anything for limestone because limestone is only made for concrete at this point this process the plastic comes from the oil factory which is called the FedEx factory so out there there's a truck unloader system and it brings it up to here plastic goes up and that's gonna make computers and then it also splits off and makes circuit boards and then over here we have copper copper comes upstairs we didn't have enough room for it downstairs um, we need a lot of spools so we put it up here we have walls with conveyor belts on it holders and then you've seen the uh, conveyor belt stackers those are really nice you have a level right here level right there so if you do your planning right you can have one conveyor belt stacker for four or five different conveyor belts which I'm slowly converting to and here's all your spools this is all within a week and a half I have over what do I have 60 hours I have 63 hours on this game already and I've only owned it since February 18th I think I think it was very fun game we got fat boys uh, character standing here so they have a little bit of work to do you know people not fully exiting the game which he fully exited he's been playing other games and stuff but that's on the game's end so now we're gonna head upstairs and up here we're still working on the walls this is called a manufacturer this takes four items into the back of it so we have circuit boards cables plastic and screws so this is your screw line your plastic look at the amount of detail the circuit boards I don't know if you guys saw the spools I didn't really take a look at them for you guys but you kinda saw a glimpse of the wood texturing here is what is this industrial beams they're encased their process is all the way on the first floor next to the uh, limestone and this one is making the heavy module frame I showed you the light-duty module frame which is sitting on top 
And that's what the manufacturer does. Manufacturer builds stuff that needs core parts. Here's your poles. These only take four connections plus the connection to make the pole actually electrified. So in reality, you only have three connections. So choose wisely. I have one power line that comes up and it splits off into four connections. And I did the same for downstairs for the other levels. So now we're gonna head downstairs. Uh, we'll take the staircase. I'll show you my staircase. This is my column staircase. I'm glad that I found something that is equally um, interested as a farming simulator. I don't think I could ever replace farming simulator on my channel or as something that I like to do because it's an open world game so we'll start doing some other content too that's what my channel is all about Ooh, there's some food there we go we, I've been looking for that so here is well, yeah this is limestone so I have it arced all the way up because I'm gonna put some more processes down here eventually and there's the limestone look at the bags and the detail he got the little pile of cement with the shovel so they've been doing a lot of good detail work texturing work I got some walkways I gotta finish and redo so now we're gonna go to the basically how this is called a UPS center this is the outbound station. Uh, all we take is coal, and then I take a few items through my uh, inventory, like stuff to make other things. And then this is my receiving end. This receives the plastic. This is how you set it all up. You tell it to load, or unload, or load. So we should be ready to go. Yep, so we have coal, and then I'm taking some stuff with me. Hopefully you guys are still paying attention. This is a lot of detail to go over. I figured I wanted to be a little bit different than starting a game from scratch and you had to watch five or six or ten videos to get the point of the game. But the achievements are pretty uh, easy to do. All you get is a hundred spools of wire, a hundred spools of cable. And that's how you, you, how you complete achievement so I figured you guys didn't really need help with that so now we're gonna head to the FedEx factory Still got to be careful because this truck takes literally uh, a width of a foundation. This is all it is, is a foundation to build my bridge. Eventually, I want to encase this with windows because I don't want to put walls up. But that might still be in the uh, experimental. The one thing we don't know about is I have the safe game, obviously will it be compatible with anything they add from experimental people say no people say yes so i'm just having my fun with the game right now and then maybe we'll do a build series once the game officially comes out and it's fully 100 100 percent So 
So from the UPS factory to the FedEx factory, it's about 2,000 meters away. So it was a nice long walk. I'll show you the original bridge that I made to get there. We got a power, there's a power slug right there on that rock. It's green and it glows at night. Those two are encased by radiation, which they do have a gas mask. There's a radiation one. It's yellow. I have two of them so far, or at least, at least two. But all they do is they spawn randomly at night and they'll spawn on rocks, trees. I actually glitched myself into a tree and I had to respawn, so be careful. <laughs> and so now to finish up the tour, we are now on the FedEx factory. So here is our receiving end. Now we will unload the truck. Um, if you start out with the tractor, make sure you take your fuel out because it will continue to run. But with the uh, truck, you get to use any fuel you want. So that could be coal, the fuel that you actually get to make. And here's the same generators, it's the same process. It's just that this is not being fed by a um, milling machine. This is fed by me, <laughs> which in later tales, hopefully in the next week or two, I will be gone for a week. Uh, we will be having a monorail system that will be fully automating both the UPS factory and the FedEx factory. So now this is your oil pump. Just got this thing. It makes 240 barrels per minute. So like I said, with the iron ingots, we only make 30 per minute. This makes 240. So when you're planning out what should I use for power shears and what should I overclock? Overclock the ones that are slow. So basically what I would, would start with is your iron ingots. Overclock the smelters first, then do your constructioners, and in the meantime, make sure your power's still good because you will blow a fuse eventually. I've blown many fuses. Here's the oil, takes the same path, goes into the uh, into the storage because we're making 200 per minute so it doesn't take long to fill these storage containers up so now we go into the plastic so if you remember obviously 240 barrels per minute coming into this processor it's only gonna make plastic 22 per minute so there's a big difference between that and this so if I had a power clocking speed thing, I would upgrade this to match that. But instead, I put them into a storage container. And then out the back it goes, and it goes as a final product into this, which will feed into my truck unloader. And I have rubber too, but we have nothing at this time that makes rubber. So now the truck is unloaded. Oop, we forgot to put our fuel back in. I was like, what did I forget to do? So now I'm done with that. Now I'm gonna come over to the outbound side and load up the plastic or whatever I wanna load up. And that's how she works. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, for my loyal subscribers, we are using the bandy cam. That's why my voice sounds different. The Elgato decided to uh, make some weird noises in my background and make me sound like a robot. So I'm not going to hear a response back from Elgato for two days from now. So I emailed them on Tuesday the 3rd. I don't know when this video will be posted. By the time I get a response back, <laughs> yeah, I will be on my way to Florida. So, it's crunch time. I gotta get videos ready. So, Bandit Cam is always here for me. I keep it in my back pocket. Um, you know, I have the license for it. So, it never expires, which is amazing. It was a good investment. So, hope you guys enjoy the content. 
spring is on the horizon, uh, for, at least for the Midwest. You know, we finally got out of the cold, and compared to last winter, this was a very, very, very easy winter. We didn't get up and we didn't get down as low as negative 50 like we did January 28th of 2019. That was cold. I didn't appreciate it. My vehicle did not appreciate it. I'm sure you guys didn't. But this winter was a lot easier. So let's hope for a nice, hot, blistering summer. And let's have a really awesome summer. I have some good news. If you guys have been following the internet, they are now building within my, uh, my neighborhood, I should say. I cannot show you guys for privacy reasons even though my address has been leaked several times and I don't even know I don't even know what the advantage is you know I guess people find it amusing just like uh, a lot of people did with Jesse Ridgeway which known as McJuggernuggets but uh, my family were a little bit more private you know we liked our privacy so here's my bridge if anybody was wondering I built out all the way out to this island basically there is another oil production over there if I need it which making 240 barrels per minute no I don't think so maybe once we get the monorail system maybe if you guys would like to join me hit me up on discord uh, there is no dedicated servers at this time but multiplayer is stable 100% uh, Fatboy didn't have any issues. Uh, we joined Lowboy server. I didn't see any issues the first time I played the game. I just didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> Period. Didn't know what I was doing when I first jumped in this game. So I jumped in my game, which is now this save game. And now I have 63 hours of gameplay. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy all the content. There's your update on the internet. I'm hoping to connect to Metronet in the next few months, so live streams could be coming, maybe. So we'll see. I gotta find an alternative to cable because they want cable boxes for you to buy or rent. And coming from Mediacom, we don't have cable boxes. So that is the only thing that is stopping us at this point. So if you guys run Sling TV or any of those services, let me know in the comments below if they're any good or we would just get a fire uh, Amazon fire stick and jailbreak it so let me know in the comments below what you guys do for cable besides normal cable like Mediacom see you guys later peace